let's move on to a simple framework for contrastive learning. We already learned all of the details, so this one is going to be fast. You take an image, you do two different types of transformations on it. Perhaps crop and resize, crop, resize, and flip, distort the color, do sobel filtering, which is differentiating to find the boundaries of your objects. You take your image, push it to the right, and then you do find a difference. That's going to give you your images like this. Add Gaussian noise, cutout, rotation, etc. So you have two different versions of the same image. These are correlated views. The type of data augmentations that you're going to do are random cropping, resizing, color distortion, Gaussian blur. You're going to have a base encoder, which is your F. That's your ResNet. That's going to give you some representations. You're going to have a projection head. This ends up being crucial. G is a fully connected neural network with two layers. Then you're going to write down your contrastive loss, which is basically trying to find the correct answer among a couple of potential answers. How do you get them? You have a mini batch of examples. If you do data augmentation on them, it's going to give you two N data points to work with. A pair of them is going to be positive because they are transformations of the same image. The rest of them are going to be your negative examples. You're going to write down the cosine similarity, and you want to increase the similarity of the representations that are going to come out of the same images and decrease the probability of representations of different pairs of images that are not the same. Perhaps representations of cats and dogs should be different. A representation of two perturbations of the same image should be similar. You have a temperature parameter. So a contribution of this paper is do systematic study on the temperature. And here 0 0.1 turned out to be the best. The other contribution is this head turns out to be really crucial. And then you make your loss symmetric. You can change the role of Xi and Xj. And this is the first time that contrastive learning and actually representation learning or self-supervised learning is giving you features that are better than the features that are coming out of uh, supervised learning, where you have labels. Sinclair is doing the best in terms of top one and top five, where you are putting a linear layer on top of the representations coming out of your F function. For ResNet 50 architecture, if you change the architecture, it is still the best. You can do semi-supervised learning, which you have a little bit more data. Rather than 0% data, you're going to have 1% or 10% data and do some fine tuning on that data. This is going to do the best again. And then you can do transfer learning to other tasks or other data sets. Food, CIFAR 10, CIFAR 100, Caltech 101, etc. I think I'm going to stop here. For those of who have questions, I'll be around.